Good day students, Sir Red here for another video discussion for Disaster Readiness and Risk Reduction or DRRR. Today's topic will be about one of the most common hazards experienced by the Philippines and us Filipinos, the hydrometeorological hazards. Today's topic intends to equip you with knowledge concerning the signs of hydrometeorological hazards such as typhoons, thunderstorms, storm surges, flash floods, floods, El Nino, and La Nina. After this discussion, you are expected to 1. Define hydrometeorological hazards 2. Identify different hydrometeorological hazards 3. Recognize the signs of impending hydrometeorological hazards 4. Improve creativity through brochure making about signs of hydrometeorological hazards and 5. Value and apply the learned knowledge about hydrometeorological hazards. But before we proceed with the discussion, why don't you test yourself and see how much you already know about this topic by answering the 15 question multiple choice on your module. Be honest in answering the test. The test is to know how much you already know. It's okay if you only get a few answers correct. To serve as a review of your previous lesson, why don't you answer first the activities on what's in and what's new? On your activity on what's in, you're going to match the sketches with their corresponding terms. Then, if the sketch shows a geological hazard, write geo. If it shows a hydrometeorological hazard, write hydro. Write your answer on the table that follows. On your activity on what's new, we have activity 1 and activity 2. On activity 1, you are going to identify the hydrometeorological hazard in the given pictures. On your activity 2, you are given the definition of jumbled words. Write the correct term on the blank provided. This picture tells a lot about the number of hydrometeorological hazards that happen in the Philippines and the main reason why they happen. It is the fact that we are surrounded by vast oceans and seas, the Pacific on the east, the West Philippine Sea on the west, and the Celebes Sea on the south. But what is hydrometeorological hazards and what are the different types of it? National Disaster Management Plan of 2016 stated that hydrometeorological is a process or phenomenon of atmospheric, hydrological, or oceanographic nature that may cause loss of life, injury, or other health impacts, property damage, loss of livelihoods and services, social and economic disruption, or environmental damage. Hydrometeorological hazards include typhoon, thunderstorm, Flood, Flash Flood, Storm Surge, El Nino, and La Nina. Hydrometeorological conditions lead to other hazards such as landslides, fires, dispersal of toxic substances, and volcanic eruption material. Unlike earthquakes, hydrometeorological hazards can be forecasted, leaving us time to prepare before they hit us. Here are the signs of hydrometeorological hazards. Tropical storm or typhoon or hurricane or cyclone, depending on where it formed, is an intense circular storm that originates over warm tropical oceans and is characterized by low pressure, high winds, and heavy rains. In the Philippines, the Philippine Atmospheric, Geophysical, and Astronomical Services Administration, or PAGASA, is the government agency responsible in creating a weather forecast. We millennials still remember the time when early Baron was the one who gives us weather updates. Now, we have uh, Kuya Kim. Bumuhos po ang malakas na ulan kaninang hapon sa Metro Manila at ilang lugar sa Luzon at Visayas dahil sa mga localized thunderstorms. Ang buhay ay weather, weather lang. And Mang Tani as our weatherman. 
545 kilometers east northeast ng Dira Catanduanes. Yan ang latest mula sa GMA Weather. Ako po si Nathaniel Cruz. Magplano para sigurado. But behind these men are the meteorologists of Pag-asa who actually does the weather forecasting. And to do this, they must know about the existing weather conditions over a large area. Meteorologists use forecasting tools called weather maps, which shows air pressure, temperature, wind, and humidity distribution trends at various atmospheric rates. Weather maps can be surface maps, which shows the data collected by ground-based instruments, or upper air maps, which shows the data collected by high-altitude instruments such as weather satellites. Weather forecasting is done in five steps. Step one is observation, where instruments are used to gather data. Instruments can be ground-based or high-altitude instruments such as satellites or weather aircrafts. Step two is the collection and transmission of weather data, where the gathered weather data are sent to forecast centers via different media such as telephone, radio phone, or local communication networks. Step three is plotting of weather data on weather charts where they are plotted over the respective areas where they are gathered. Surface charts are plotted four times a day, while high-altitude charts are prepared twice daily. Step 4 is the analysis of weather maps, where the data on weather charts are studied in order to predict the weather. And finally, step 5 is the formulation of the weather forecast. Thunderstorm is a powerful, short-lived weather disturbance that is almost always associated with lightning, thunder, dense clouds, heavy rain or hail, and fast roaring winds. Thunderstorm occurs when layers of dry, moist air rise to the cool regions of the atmosphere in a broad, rapid updraft. Thunderstorm forms through three stages, the cumulus stage, the mature stage, and the dissipating stage. The first stage is the cumulus stage, where the sun hits the Earth's surface during the day and warms the air around it. The second stage is the mature stage. A cumulus cloud becomes very large, where the water therein becomes large and heavy, and raindrops begin to fall through the cloud when the rising air can no longer hold them. The last stage is the dissipating stage. After 30 minutes, thunderstorm begins to dissipate. This occurs when the downdraft in the cloud begins to dominate over the updraft. Since warm moist air can no longer rise, cloud droplets can no longer form. Flood is a high water stage in which water overflows its natural or artificial banks onto normally dry land. The effects of floods on human well-being ranges from unqualified blessings to catastrophes. Here are the main types of floods to look out for. First is inland flooding. It is the technical name for ordinary flooding that occurs in inland areas, hundreds of miles from the coast. Second are flush floods. These are caused by heavy rain or the sudden release of water over a short period of time. The name flash refers to their fast occurrence and also to the raging torrents of water that move with great speed. Flash floods are also caused by heavy precipitation in a short period of time, usually less than 6 hours. Number 3 is river flooding. It occurs when water levels in rivers, lakes, and streams rise and overflow onto their surrounding banks, shores, and neighboring land. Fourth, coastal flooding. is the inundation of land areas along the coast by seawater. Last is urban flooding. This occurs when there is a lack of drainage in an urban area. Storm surges or daluyong ng bagyo in the Philippine system is where the irregular sea level rise during tropical typhoon or bagyo. When the tropical typhoon reaches the coast, strong winds force ocean water over low-lying areas which can cause flooding. Pagasa takes many technological considerations into account when forecasting the negative impacts of a storm surge. For storm surge-prone communities, the most important considerations are the strength of the tropical cyclone, the height of the surge, and the community located in the low-lying area. 
This infographic shows the storm surge color-coded warning system. Green means no alert and there is only half meter rise in sea level. Yellow alert means there is a 0.5 to 1 meter rise in sea level. Orange alert means there is a 1.1 to 3 meter rise in sea level. And the red alert means take action and it is given when the sea level rise above 3 meters. Each color code has a corresponding actions to be taken to ensure safety and well-being of the people. Green means no actions required. Yellow means storm surge is possible and people should stay away from the coast or the beach. Preparation measures must be carried out. Orange means storm surge is expected and conditions could become life-threatening. All marine activities must be cancelled and follow evacuation guidelines from local authorities. Red alert means storm surge is catastrophic. There is a significant threat to life. Mandatory evacuation is in force. El Niño means the little boy or Christ child in Spanish. It was first recognized by fishermen off the coast of South America in the 1600s with the appearance of unusually warm waters in the Pacific. La Niña means the little girl in Spanish. It is sometimes referred to as El Viejo, anti-El Niño, or simply a cold event. El Niño is the warming phase of water temperatures around the Pacific Equator. During normal weather patterns around the equator, trade winds carry warm water from the tropical areas of the Pacific Ocean. Moving west, the winds distribute warm water from the eastern Pacific into the cooler areas of the ocean. During El Niño, those winds weaken and the east-west travel of warm water stops. The winds reverse and carry warm water back east, which makes the warm part of the Pacific Ocean even warmer. Sea surface temperatures can increase by 1 to 3 degrees Fahrenheit for months or even years. La Niña is the opposite of El Niño, an intensification of normal weather patterns. This causes ocean surface temperatures to cool down as winds strengthen and blow warm water towards the west. La Niña events may but don't always follow an El Niño event. El Niño and La Niña affect not only ocean temperatures but also how much it rains on land. Depending on which cycle occurs, this can mean either droughts or flooding. Typically, El Niño and its warm waters are associated with drought, while La Niña is linked to increased flooding. But because the global weather system is very complex, this isn't always the case. For example, in 2015, El Niño caused both flooding and droughts in different places. Now that you are done with the lecture part, you are now ready to apply your learnings on the activities found on what's more, what I have learned, and what I can do. In what's more, you are going to analyze the picture and answer the questions that follow. In what I have learned, you are going to fill in the boxes with the correct words or phrases to complete the meaning of hydrometeorological hazards. In what I can do, you are going to create a be prepared brochure about the signs of hydrometeorological hazard exposure. Visit a community using Google Maps and determine all the elements exposed to hydrometeorological hazard in the locality. Use your resources to create creative brochure. Be creative and include emergency hotlines as much as possible. You'll be graded based on the rubrics given below. Now let us evaluate your level of mastery in achieving the learning competencies by answering the 15 question multiple choice on the assessment. So that is all for this video discussion on hydrometeorological hazards. Again, this is a red for disaster readiness and risk reduction or DRRR. I hope you've learned something from this video discussion. So, see you next time.